how important our people can be. Like it's been rightly observed that sovereignty belongs to the people. And no matter what, our people must speak. Those at the National Assembly remain the agents of the people. Why we, the people, remain their principals? And there is no constitution for anybody at the National Assembly to amend, except we give them such to do. At the National Conference, we have had the adoption of the procedure of rules. We have had delegates respond to the president's speech. We are now going to our different committees, about 20 committees. But the most important thing, and the reason why we are gathered here today is that we need to get input from all members of the civil society groups, pro-democracy groups, market women, organizers, the unemployed. We need to get your input. It's the input that we get from all those gathered here today, and they all represent different strata of the society. It's the input that we get from you that we enrich whatever we are going to submit, which is going to be the, our final submission at the committee level. I also want to assure each and every one here, like we have also realized that at the level of Campaign for Democracy, that the CD has remained one of the moving spirits behind the idea of a sovereign national conference. And the CD took that practical move in 1990 but it was smashed. And we also realized that we have said oftentimes that convening a national, a sub-national conference was a, national, a panacea for the crisis of nationhood. So our gathering here today is to prove a point. And that point is that power belongs to the people. So I want to assure each and every one here that all the contributions, apart from the ones we have received, because Women Arise was see. We have set up a secretariat where we are carrying out massive research to have people at the secretariat. So our gathering here today is to prove a point. And that point is that whatever you give us, we further enrich whatever we are going to use as the input. And it's going to be the collective contribution that will help to enrich the process. And I also want us to realize that we have always talked about sovereign national conference. And that is that, that's sovereignty. But now we are insisting, and I want all of us here to say yes, if you firmly believe in what I'm going to say here. We are insisting on a national referendum. Do you believe on a plebiscite? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Anything we are going to do, the Constitution matters. But whatever we have to do, in enriching the constitution in terms of true federalism, devolution of power, in terms of giving power to the people, which the 1999 tends to alienate, in, in terms of empowering those who are vulnerable, those who are physically cha challenged, the people who are suffering from autism, and also ensuring that our women who suffer domestic violence, those who have been raped, those who, are, who partake in jungle justice, that all of them should be sentenced to life imprisonment. All those things should be included in the Constitution. And whatever resolution we have as the Constitution can and must not be thinkered with except through a national referendum. So those are the two important things that I have to say, that sovereignty belongs to the people. Whatever we have to do must be subject to a, a national referendum. And for us to remain accountable, for the process to be credible, we must have the voices of each and every one been had. And we promise and we do sincerely hope that at the end, our gathering here today will further enrich the process. We to brief uh, the Nigerian people in terms of our own assessment of where we are at the National Conference and what's, what is the likelihood of uh, getting something uh, concrete coming out of this. Well, um, I also need to state, to state here uh, beyond what my sister had said, that we are going to be doing this like maybe almost every month as a way of getting feedback, because we believe that we must do what uh, whatever we are doing in a business or usual manner. 
often time when people go on, go to uh, represent people under a particular platform, they don't come back to report back to their people in terms of how they are representing them. So we believe that this is an opportunity for us to report back to the civil society constituency upon which platform that we are standing at the national confab about how far we have been able to go. And of course, we kept letting them know that for us as a Nigerian, if, if you can get the food on the table, you care less whether the person is from the food is a Christian or a Muslim, or whether the person is from the north or from the east or from the south. But we noticed that as it is presently, uh, there is a strong uh, uh, voices of ethnicism, religion in the confab. And what we are trying to do to, is to let them know that we need to transcend beyond ethnicism and religion to be able to chart a way forward for Nigeria. We have made some quick gains. Uh, one of the things that we raised when we first got there as civil society was the need for them to change the language of the uh, rules of procedure. Uh, the rule of procedure that we, we have uh, previously actually had, uh, did not actually speak to the gender character of Nigeria. And we pushed it as gender act act advocates and activists there that there was a need for them to change the, the rules of procedure. And that was the first game we got. Eventually, the rules of procedure now reads the gender character of the Nigerian people. And I think that that's a good score. Now, as we also... <laughs> The other issue which we also raised and which we got initially was the need that, if, because we realized that um, we had several people there, former this, former that, yeah. former governors, former senators, and of course some people that have brought us to where we are in Nigeria presently, in Akapa, they constitute about 80% of the people that are seated in that uh, national conference. And we felt that we are supposed to have 20 committees uh, different committees and uh, one of the things we proposed to them was the need for us to have um, people electing the leadership of those committees and the reason being that we felt that most likely some of these people will become the chair in Akafa, some of them I don't want to mention names, will become the chair of public finance because they know more about how to bring corrupt practices to this country. You know, so we, we felt that some of them will become the chair of some of the committees and they might not be able to offer the kind of things that the Nigerian people would uh, need from the national conference. But uh, we got that as a good vote the, for, by the first week. But they went back, they, they said they were the 50 mm. wise men. Yeah. So they came back to propose to us that uh, it will not be good, given the, uh, the diversity of the people at the conference. And what they did was to bring it back as a way of motion. And unfortunately, the civil society raised the counter motion. Yeah. But of course, if you understand, if I say that 80% are people, people who are from the same, the same place. So it was not possible for us. So our counter motion did not get the kind of support that we needed. So eventually, so the general agreement is that the principal officers of the national confab would elect the chair and the deputy and also the secretary of the different uh, committees. Well, we are still pushing to say that there is a need for them to look at a whole lot of other things. People who can actually offer uh, something concrete to the Nigerian people to chair those, uh, to lead those uh, committees. So we didn't really get that uh, clearly. Now, there are a lot of negotiations ongoing and that, uh, uh, from the angle of the civil society, we have also set up two uh, technical uh, teams, one on gender, looking at en ensuring that we mainstream gender in all the committees. There are committees on transport, committees on trade, on labor, on energy, environment, and a whole lot of other things. So we have a technical committee that we have set up uh, in Abuja, which is being headed by the Nigerian uh, Women Trust Fund uh, to coordinate the in impute of Nigerian women into some of the things that we'll be doing. Then the other one is being led by uh, Social Action Center, mm. uh, our, our, our brother Isaac, Isaac. and uh, Nimubasi, uh, who also belong to this group. They are also setting up another team with Jaye Gaskia uh, and all of us. 
where we are getting the input of civil society. And I'm sure that from what we have agreed with the civil society angle of it, they are also going to be coming to different zones to ensure that they also elicit further information from people to be able to feed in. Now, it's also important for me to also uh, say that one of the arguments that also came up was whether we need to get um, the public to bring to submit input memoranda. Uh, memoranda into the process. Uh, initially, that was also resisted by some uh, of the bourgeois class to say that, well, we already have had enough from people, so we can collate it and we won't have the enough time. And we said, well, we'll not be bringing legitimacy to this process if we don't get public to, pro, uh, you know, to, to bring some input into the process. So we were able also to get that. And I am aware that in the past one or two weeks, they have published in some newspapers uh, that people should submit a memorandum to the National Conference. And I would want to appeal to all of us. And the deadline is 15th of April to ensure that from, from our different organizations, we send in something there so that they will not say that uh, when we didn't hear from you, that is why we have to make some of these decisions. So I'm appealing to everybody that we should. So there are a lot of negotiation going on. And uh, for us as civil society, we find the place very, very strange. You are dealing with strange bedfellows, mm -hmm. and you need to have to, you have to manage what you say. Exactly. You know you have to be careful about how you relate with them. Uh, we go to meetings and we don't uh, uh, close by one o'clock, you know, two o'clock, yeah. because it's also important for us to try as much as possible to enter into all the processes that they are all, they, they set up there, so that we can infuse some of our principles and our positions there. But I think that uh, the way it is going. Uh, there's a possibility that we come out with something concrete because we also realize that they are all not converted. So we're mm -hmm. trying to see that we get as many people and pull them to our side. And also, also we're also throwing it back to them. There's also a generational thing. Wale Shenka has said that some kind of generation is wasted and we discovered that the majority of the wasted generation, they are sitting there. <laughs> so our point is also that if they want to rewrite history, this is an opportunity for them to do, uh, to rewrite and the history. So by and large, that's what we have been able to do. Now, a few days ago, the country is, I mean, Nigeria is, is rebased as the biggest economy in Nigeria. Now, I ask you, does it mean anything to you? No. Exactly. It can never mean anything to you because you don't even get basic necessities as water or light, or road, comfortable road. You don't even get it. And they are deceiving themselves. They said they are the biggest economy in Nigeria. In Africa. Yeah, in Africa. The reason why these things do not trickle down is the activities of the blood suckers. Is the activities of the rats and mosquitoes that have now become elephants. Now, we all happen, all three of us happen to be that. I am not digressing. I happen to be members of this national conference going on. Now, I will have a few words to say about the national conference to you. But let me just tell you first that, you, that these people will not relinquish their wicked hands on the jugular of Nigeria unless people like you, like you, like you, take action. Yes. You must resist them. You must protest regularly. You must hold meetings regularly. The Nigerian independence or this nationhood, this is part of what I want to say at the uh, conference. Many people do not even understand. They are saying that Nigeria is now 100 years. How can, how can Nigeria as a nation be 100 years? You only got your independence 1960. Do the arithmetic. Is that 100 years? No. And even then, and even then, the independence up to today is a nominal independence. It's, an, it's a nominal independence, flag independence. I remember, as a student, before, before 1960, you know, we were looking forward to national, I mean, to our independence. When we got independence, I was one of the people. We had British passports because we were, we were British colonies. 
I had a British passport. I took my passport like this mm. and my wife and, th and threw it away. Mm. We threw British passports away mm. in 1961 when we arrived here. Mm. Because we were expecting a nation yes. of which we would be proud of. Mm. But today, it is dashed expectation. Mm. Because of rogues in government, mm. because of irresponsible people in, in a government, military opportunists, military rogues, the expectations of a great nation have been dashed. So we have to start all over again. We have to start all over again after 53 years. And that is why we believe, finally, take this home. We believe that it is up to you. They are about the so-called next election. I want to tell you about that. You see different groupings. A, P, C, D, P, P, D, P, whatever they are, all they are thinking about is who becomes, who becomes president, who becomes governor, who becomes senator. That's all they are thinking about in 2015. Not how, not how Nigerians will have normal, peaceful living. That's all they think about. And you must stop them. What did I say? Stop them. Stop them. Yes. And I will tell you how you stop them. We are going to say that there will be no 2015 elections unless and until we reconfigure this country yes. and give ourselves a brand new acceptable constitution. I will subject to a referendum. Yes. A brand new acceptable constitution by the people of this nation. A constitution that will guarantee that the, that the resources of this country are no longer uh, looted. Do you know, just to give you, just sprinkle, just random, because we have to explain this thing to you. We don't have to suffer as we have been suffering, but we impose that upon ourselves voluntarily for the sake of the people and for our conscience. The product of the conference must only be subject to the approval of people like you, yes. not the National Assembly. In, in, in um, Rwanda, where they used religion, as you heard, in the conference, they, tried to use, they started trying to use religion and, and ethno ethnicity. When you use those two bases, they are bases for divisions. They're not for cooperation or for building up. Because we need to articulate these issues and help our, our delegates to take these issues back, see the relevance of these issues, the importance of these issues, educate their colleagues. Their colleagues. Many of them are sleeping, we know, but please try and educate them that these are important and germane issues to the people so that we can save this country and save ourselves the doom that will be if we fail. I tried to study what we have as security. And what I saw was basically the Nigerian police is an offshoot of what the colonial masters had as a kind of national police um, force. And it will be very interesting that we need to look into the issue of states having their own police with a centralized body at federal level. It is also very important that a deep understanding, which I'm also very happy from when Dr. Akiode spoke that they have, with both Dr. Joe, that they've set up a research arm. It's not enough to talk here, but to be able to study in depth what exactly are the root causes of violence. Federal or unitary system. It is not about whether we have um, state police or the federal police. It is not about gender. It's not about whether some, some, some regions in the federation have six states or someone that has half five. The, the issue to me is what is important to the life of average Nigerians. Poverty has no tribe. Unemployment has no tribe. It has no religion. Gender, too, has no tribe. That's what I'm saying. So that is the starting point. No, for me, I don't care about gender. So if you, if you bring it down, you don't then tend to realize the gargantuan nature of the issue. 
if you reduce it to gender, it is not about gender. It is about our person, it is about our country. And then we all have a responsibility. If the anti-corruption institutions is assumed to be the one to catch the thieves, then we can just go back and pack our luggages and leave the country. Because under their present composition, they are appointed by the leadership of the political class. And those who appoint them dictate what they do. It is very difficult. The only thing that changed the situation are critically three. And that is where you talk about vertical accountability. And that is the NGOs, the civil society organizations like ours, the media, and our electoral accountability. Electoral accountability to the extent that even if a criminal survives the four years in office, he would not be elected come the next electoral process. Yes. But that doesn't happen. No. Fayoshe is scheming to be back of the governor of Ekiti State, even though he's standing trial. Yes. But, but the judge is there at the confab. Even though he is still standing trial. Yeah. Even though he was impeached less than 10 years ago. And that tells you that we have failed in terms of effecting or bringing to life what we call vertical accountability. And that is one of the things that those at the CONFAB must bring to fore to the extent that horizontal accountability in terms of those who would monitor what people in office are doing and then report situations of undoing are well empowered to do this. There must be also that mechanism that not only would monitor the wrongdoings, it will also design the charges that they would pay and ensure that those who are charged also pay the prices. And ultimately and finally will be that there must be a mechanism where those who are responsible for these activities, both the monetary evaluation and conviction, are insulated from external and political influences. And where we can achieve this, backed with effective vertical accountability with the independent media that is allowed to do its job as it is enshrined in the Constitution, and very active and various civil society organizations that are there to educate the masses and mobilize them, and an effective electoral processes that ensure the sanctity of the mandate, then we will have corruption at its lowest level. I think. Just last week, Nigeria statisticians announced that we are the largest economy, the largest economy with the largest unemployed youth. We have more than 1.5 million youth that are jobless. So if we have 1.5 million youth that are jobless, we, who are the people that, are, that is working for the economy? Who are the active working force? The recent NIS, the, uh, the show of shame, have shown that Nigerian youth are not um, are not employed. But if the government will say that we said more than 10 million people, order, 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 please, let's listen now. Listen now. More than 10 million. More than 10 million people have been employed. More than so so people have been employed. Who are the people that are employed? Who are the employers? And who are the employees? Please, I would like I would like the delegates to the conference to tackle these issues of unemployment because. There is, there is no way we can tackle all the issues. There is no way we can discuss other issues without tackling the basic issues. I think unemployment is the basic and the fundamental issue.